Greetings everybody, this is the Starving Martian, and it looks like there's yet another Star Wars movie about to be unleashed upon us. I have to say that I, for one, am less than enthused. Um, I think the current batch of Star Wars movies exists only to prove that the prequel films everybody seems to hate really aren't that bad after all. Um... And so I thought it'd be fun to go back and look at the Yoda action figures that came out during the prequel movies. Uh, my wife actually collected these back in the day, and yes, of course I married a sci-fi collector. I mean, would you expect otherwise from me? But, um, so these are actually for my wife's collection, the things I'll be showing off. And unlike me, she likes to keep her collectibles in their original packaging, um, so I won't be able to show off how all the uh, special features work or any articulation, anything like that, but you do get to see what they look like still attached to their backer boards. You also see the backer boards have sustained some damage over the years. They started to warp. They've been stored in um, plastic containers in the attic, and they just don't hold up so well. But um, be that as it may, this is Yoda from Star Wars Episode One with Jedi Council Chair. Isn't that the most exciting <laughs> accessory you've ever seen. Alright, so I'm going to hold these up steady um, instead of letting them just sit because otherwise you get that glare and you can't see what's going on. But uh, there's Yoda. There's his council chair. And I have to say, for the movie, that's the most appropriate um, accessory to give him because all he did was sit and chat. And this is a extremely ugly Yoda, in my personal opinion, but Yoda was extremely ugly in the movie. <laughs> so it works. It works. He comes with his ComTech chip, which um, you see on the back, if you have the ComTech reader, you just scan the chip and he'll say one of several phrases. Hard to see the dark side is. How feel you? Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. May the force be with you. I'm assuming it says it better than I can. But, um... That's a pretty cool gimmick. I do like that because, again, it's not built into the figure, so it doesn't, you know, interfere with the figure's looks or uh, posability or anything. So that's a feature I did like. So this was the card that all the Star Wars Episode One figures came on. You got uh, that image of Darth Maul being all menacing and uh, looking like he's going to be more important to the movie than he actually was. And uh, there you have it. So that was um, Episode One Yoda. From the Phantom Menace. Now, episode 2 Yoda, the first one they give us here, Attack of the Clones, is the exact same figure. They've painted him differently. Um, but yeah, he's the, the exact same guy. His hand is slightly different, and that's because he now comes with a um, lightsaber. But, uh, yeah, if we... Um, Hold these guys up side to side. You'll see that aside from some paint, it's pretty much the same Yoda. Uh, but if you place his left hand on the lightsaber, it's force attracted to the hand. So they put a magnet in his hand. That's that's a big difference. So, um, so yeah, this uh, first one here, not that impressive. Still the same ugly Yoda. Now he has a magnetic hand, but you know what? That gimmick doesn't really work well for lightsaber fights. Because, like, if you have two characters clash, they'll easily knock the uh, magnetic lightsaber out of the guy's hand if the other guy has a good, you know, plastic grip on it. So, not that impressive. But, they would come out with many other Yoda figures for Attack of the Clones, including Yoda Jedi Master here with Force Action. Um, this guy here has a spinning... A uh, pedestal thing he comes with, and you see some forced lightning behind him. And again, if you look at the back, it'll show you. You can twist the platform to reveal Yoda's Jedi levitating powers. So you can make him levitate on this. And obviously he's just standing on this uh, transparent little peg, but... As far as figures go, it works. Uh, he looks pretty good with lightsaber and uh, battle pose. And if you give him his walking stick, he actually looks like he's hobbling along. It's like bizarre to me because um, the same figure looks perfectly 
uh, natural in uh, old stooped over position as he does in ready to kick your butt position. So uh, this guy, I have to say, big improvement over the last one, and I think this is a very nice Yoda figure. Uh, most of these Star Wars figures, by the way, even new in package, are uh, still pretty darn cheap. You could pick them up for like ten bucks, five bucks. You're not going to break the bank uh, assembling a Yoda collection. So uh, here's another one from Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Another Yoda with Force Power. This guy comes with a battle droid and a whole uh, background assembly. You'll see it was originally sold at uh, the late lamented KB Toy Stores for 12 bucks. So it was probably about 9 or 10 at uh, Walmart's at the time. Again, we have to look at the back of the figure to see how he works. He also has the um, magnetic grip for the lightsaber. I do like the way this picture shows the lightsaber kind of floating up to his hand. He's got a bio there. Uh, the oldest member of the Jedi Council, Yoda is a powerful Jedi with enormous powers. Engaged in battle against a formidable and deadly super battle droid, Yoda reveals his superior skills in the Force as well as his dexterior, his dexterity rather, at, and fighting prowess. All right, so the gimmick to this one is that the base has uh, several hidden panels and switches. When you move uh, Yoda around, he'll flip this little thing over, which knocks um, the battle droid off of the platform. And uh, you could also make this thing spin as if Yoda's levitating it to knock enemies over. There's other figures in this line. My favorite, of course, being the C-3PO with Droid Factory Assembly. But, um, but, yeah, there's that. So, Yoda had a good number of figures available for the second movie, which makes sense because um, he was a lot more of an action star in Episode 2 than he was in Episode 1. Now, in between Episodes 2 and 3 came the Clone Wars. Uh, that gets its own separate toy line with its own separate cartoons, uh, there's two two different cartoons they each have their own toy line and um if you guys like maybe i'll I'll dig out some more at another date but uh for now i'm just going to show off this one here this clone wars because it's not actually based on any of the cartoons uh there was a line of um clone wars figures that um you know it has the same uh logo here as the clone wars cartoon does but they're more movie accurate and so here's Yoda from the Army of the Republic. Um, very simple figure this time around, but he's got this little general's sash on. He's got a uh, lightsaber that he can grip without worrying about being knocked out of his hands this time around. He's got some kind of floating chair accessory. Yeah, it's about side view of it. And there's Yoda himself. So on the back, you can see that his hover chair opens. I don't know what kind of hover chair you have. If you actually need it to have legs, that to me is not a hover chair any longer, but whatever. You get your quote up there, Begun the Clone War Has. Uh, description of the Battle of Geonosis. Another bio for Yoda. And the other figures in the line. And as you can see, they're all from the Clone Wars, but they're all... Uh, movie accurate instead of cartoon accurate. Including Ventress here, who uh, obviously wasn't in the movie, but they made one to look more uh, true to life than uh, true to cartoon, which is kind of cool. And so that's Clone Wars Yoda. And naturally, that leads us to Revenge of the Sith. So here's Revenge of the Sith Yoda. He's got a spinning attack. Obviously. Um, and all the Revenge of the Sith figures, of course, were on this uh, kind of back aboard here. This bubble plastic overlay with uh, Vader's face and uh, the lava of uh, Mustafar. And so he's holding his lightsaber straight up in the air. Looks very uh, 
movie poster like. <laughs> you can see he's got um, his cloak flaying out behind him in the back. And um, on the back you see a description of his spinning attack. You wind him into the base, push a button, and he'll spring out. Probably just land flat on his face and look like an idiot. But and that'll happen. Uh, again, more figures in the line. Complete your collection. Now, I'm sure that uh, Yoda had more figures for um, episode uh, three. In fact, my wife might even own some of them, but um, these were the, in the box I was able to dig out of the attic. I had to go in the back corner where all the spiders are, so I hope you guys appreciate. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Yoda from the prequel trilogy. But before we go, this, as far as I could tell, has nothing to do with the prequel trilogy. It was put out in 2004. But I dug this out of the same box, and it was too adorable not to bring out and show you guys. <laughs> Here is Yoda from Jedi Force. Put out by Play School for ages 3 and up. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> uh, I love this guy. Now he's got a lightsaber that's supposed to light up. It doesn't. The batteries died after these years. He comes on this swamp stomper. So he can get around Dagobah. Look at that. It's like a little personal uh, chicken walker, really. You can see, again, some of the other figures in the line. <laughs> but he's got real walking action, and that's always fun. Anyway, it was not part of the uh, prequel trilogy, but it was adorable, and I figured why not. So, this has been The Starving Martian. Uh, tell me, uh, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? What's your favorite appearance by Yoda? And uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Until then, keep watching the skies.